start by showing you this. Can you see this? Can you see this little thing? It looks like a little piece of spaghetti. Can you see this other one? Other little piece of spaghetti? These are your vocal cords. <laughs> They're not actually your vocal cords. They're part of a, you know, a headset wire, but that's not how big, how big your vocal cords are. I was shocked when I was learned this because I thought vocal cords, I probably had a whole set, you know, and 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 they were probably big, you know, <clears throat> but they're just two tiny little flips of spaghetti. And then everything else about our sound is made through the body's resonance, the instrument that you are. And so in the Okio training, we're really opening up that instrument. We're maybe even accessing a different instrument uh, in how we use the hara, how we use the breath. And what we're working out, we're using the vibration of sound to work out all the tension and stuckness that otherwise dampens the resonance or keeps us from being able to radiate our true clear note. And of course, our voice is related not only to how we speak and communicate to one another, but to every aspect of creative expression. So this is no small task we undertake in resonating our, our true note. Uh, it is, um, it's really at the heart of it. <laughs> so uh, this Okyo training uh, is particularly important. Um, so let's, a set of exercises that uh, I came across courtesy of Anadia Judith, who is a expert in yoga and in the chakra system, I found really useful. And I'd like to open our time together going through those with you. But first, I'd like you to just take stock. I'd like you to hear your own sound, kind of do a before and after comparison. So um, you can stay on mute, but I'd like you to hear for your sound, yourself your sound of E, your E. Just say to yourself, E. And on the next exhale, E. Next exhale, ah, ah. And I want to invite you to feel both the sound quality, but also where you can actually feel it vibrating in your body. Next is O. Uh, ooh, I'm sorry, ooh. Ooh. Next is O. Ooh. Ooh. All right. So that's our starting place. Let's see how we can change that. Not that it has to change, but let's just see what happens. So for this exercise, it's useful if you're sitting on um, cushions or a bed or something where you can bring your knees up. But even if you're in a chair, see if you can sit in a way where you could raise your knees a little bit. Um, just play around with that. Get in a position for this first one, because we're going to start from the root chakra and work our way up and see how we can get some opening in the body. <clears throat> Um, so for this first one, um, what we're going to do on the inhale, we're going to inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth. So all of these will be done that way. Inhaling, exhaling through the mouth. You can do them as slow or as fast as you like. So work with your own body condition. There's no extra prize for speed. No, you don't. Um, you get a little more energy and feeling with speed, but um, it's more just work with your condition exactly where it is and see how the body wants to move this morning to open up whatever is ready to open up. So first one, root chakra. On the inhale, arms come up and the knees come up a little bit. Exhale, drop. Keep going at your own speed. Doesn't have to be fast, just clear. All 
All right. And <clears throat> check out the sound of O. Oh. Oh. Okay. Second chakra, this next one. Um, for this one, uh, what we're going to do on the inhale is make, sort of arch the back and, and expand the belly out. On the exhale, we, we um, kind of round the back. So it's coming out, exhale. Inhale, exhale. So it, if you know cat and cow, it's kind of that posture, except we're sitting up. So we're kind of doing it vertically rather than horizontally. So arching, exhale. And you can use your hands to like expand the hara, exhale. Get more space in there. And just breathe regular. And just exhale the sound of ooh. ooh. Okay, next one. I'm going to work the solar plexus area. And I want to just start by taking your fingertips and feel into the underside of your rib cage. You could might start near the sides and then slowly work toward the middle and feel into even near the middle where you get to the solar plexus. You don't want to press too hard. You want to press with sensitivity or feel with sensitivity. You're really working in here the diaphragm and you'll find you can sort of move it around, massaging it a little bit with your fingers. And you can kind of work down the ribs, come up to the center, you can move it around. So for this exercise, we're, on the, we're gonna make circles from the solar plexus as we kind of massage the center. So on the, if you think of this as a clock face, as you go from 12 to six, you're inhaling. As you go from six to 12, you're exhaling. And then we'll, we'll go the other way about halfway through. So do the massage part wherever your body needs it. But what you're doing is inviting flexibility into that whole diaphragm, which is a big membrane coming around the top of the hara. Big membrane. So you want to get it really moving. So be gentle with yourself, with, work with sensitivity and and let's uh, do some circles. Change direction. and breathe normal. Ah, and <clears throat> when you're ready, exhale the sound of ah. Ah. Okay. Working up now to the heart, heart area, chakra, fourth chakra. For this one, we're going to touch our shoulders, touch our shoulders, and we're going to pivot side to side. So now we're going to turn on this plane. So we stay upright in gravity, but on one way, we go to the right on the inhale and then to the left on the exhale. So it's in, out, in, out. And we'll change about halfway through. So at your own speed.
go other way. So All right, and come back. And exhale the sound of A. A. Keep all this relaxed. <clears throat> now we work the throat. Throat is a really key area. Um, I don't know if you've ever had the experience of trying to stop yourself from crying. I don't know, if, or choking back emotions or choking back fear. But where we choke is here. We tense this area. And even, you know, little kids, when they draw pictures of themselves, psychologists look at those pictures and they tell how dissociated the child is, mind from body, by how long they make the neck, you know. So this area is like really important in terms of opening it up. And it's so important for, um, uh, for our training because what, uh, the breath to drop all the way through. If this area is tight, that's the first sticking point. This one, place the hands, uh, uh, just you can interlock the fingers and leave the thumbs open because the thumbs have a really important role to play here. Let me bring the camera a little closer so you can see. Because on the inhale, we're gonna, Take in a breath, and then on the exhale, we're gonna drop the elbows as the thumbs stroke down the sides of the throat. You see, they're stroking down the sides of the throat as the head tips back. And we're gonna use the sound of ah, just to add a little vibration to this. So, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. So head tips back on the exhale, sound of ah, ah, ah. Work at your own pace. And check it out. All right. Does it feel warmer? Yeah, warmer? Try the sound of E now. E Okay, now to just get some tension out of this, this head of ours, just rub your, um, this joint the, that connects the jaw up into the, blah, 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 right, just rub this joint a little bit. All right, open and shut your jaw a few times, making stupid faces. And what I'd like you to do is take the, your fingertips at the middle of the brow on the inhale, on the exhale, it's like it pulls apart. Get rid of all those circular thoughts, right? Inhale, exhale. Free the mind. All right. And now just exhale the sound of mm, like M and M's and M and M M M M M M. Hey, last one. We'll open the crown chakra. So this one we're gonna on the inhale bring the hands up center, and here again the thumbs have a really important little role to play because they tap. They tap the top crown of the head as they go by, and then we exhale down. So in a way, they're going tap. All right. Top of the head feel open now? Has it? Give it the sound of ing, ng, like the ng of sing. 
Mm. Okay, so now <clears throat> let's hear the E, A, A, U, O. Let's hear how it sounds in you now. Just feel this. And what I invite is just take your throat and gently again open it up as if you're just inviting it to relax more than it's ever relaxed in your life. <laughs> like, like, if, if it used to be this big, you now want it this big. <laughs> that feeling, all right? Like you're making a big vessel. All right. So there's no obstruction. All right. And without any tension in your face, so you don't have to bring it back into the jaw or anything. Just let E come through you. Go ahead. And now let A emerge. A. How about ah? Uh, uh, how about ooh? ooh. And how about O? Oh. Oh. Okay, so let me just check in with you for a moment. How many of you, just give me a thumbs up, thumbs sideways or thumbs down. How many of you felt things open up or you could feel thumbs up would be you feel more of the body is more open after these neutral would be sideways. Let me just check. Okay, good, good. All right. So now we've got the instruments working a little better. Um, let me introduce you to a couple instruments in your body. I was surprised to find these in my body. Um, is I didn't, I always thought I just had one voice. But one time, Dan Suha Roshi uh, was teaching a class in Okyo, and we'd been doing all this sound work, and he'd grown very hoarse. He, he couldn't speak anymore. So it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's how he sounded after a while. He completely had lost his voice. But then he started making sound from the hara, and he had his voice again. And like, because we, we were doing this jumping exercise where every time we landed on the floor, this is one of the exercises we sometimes do, we emit a sound like, you know, and the sound still came out. So it showed me we can make sound from different parts of our body. Um, at least that's what I thought it showed me. I, I'm not exactly sure what it showed me. I mean, we still have these vocal cords, but, I, but somehow we can, the sound is different. Um, and there's a kind of depth and power we can bring into our okyo when we bring the sound from hara, as opposed to my normal speaking voice. If this is my normal speaking voice, and I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to you this way, I might say namu samanda moto nano harachi. That's the rhythm we use for okyo, right? Namu samanda pa 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 pa. So it's got that driving rhythm that, that, um, that builds so much, so, so much energy and synchrony in a group. Namu samanda moto nano harachi. But if I, if I use a different part of my body, if I say, instead of making that sound from normal speaking voice. I'm going to make it from Hara. If I'm going to imagine like I've lost my voice, how would my Hara say this? Then the voice drops into a different quality. It's like a, it's like a different instrument or a different part of the body is able to resonate. So it starts to sound not namu sa, but namo sa mandamo to nano hara che koto sha so no non regular speaking voices here. Hara voices here. So I want to just play with a vowel for a moment. In your regular speaking voice, just say oh. Oh. Now 
imagine only your hara could speak. So to get the hara to speak, what that means is you have to be able to expand the hara. So it's almost like um, I find myself setting the hara so the tailbone's dropping a little bit and the bottom of the abdomen's expanding. So I can actually feel a gesture down there when I drop into that center. So I invite you to play with that. Oh. Oh. oh, can you hear, can you hear the difference? Oh, play, with, play it with yourself. Just try it a couple of different ways. If it's regular speaking voice, how to voice, like as if you've lost your regular voice, but the how to, as if the how to had a mouth, <laughs> the feeling, as if the how to could speak. Oh, and all this just gets out of the way. It's just empty. It's like an empty flute for playing the hara. Okay. Oh, try ooh. Right. Ah. Uh. Uh. Right. A. Hara A. A. Right. E. Okay, um, let me just check in with you now. How many of you could feel a difference? May, it, it may not be as clear as you want it or deep as you want it, but you could feel how you can move the sound differently in your body. Any, yes, yes, okay, yeah, all right. All right, good. So um, the uh, uh, so let's let's uh, let's play with that a little bit because now I'd like what I'd like to play with is just just do namu samanda. That's the opening of one of our chants. You know it. Um, if you have a, uh, an okyo book, this would be a good time to get it handy. But if you don't have an okyo book, just say namu samanda. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what we're going to start with. Namo Samanda, Namo Samanda. And this time, what I want to do, I'm going to come to a kneeling position. You can do this kneeling, standing, whatever you want, but I'm going to actually use my hand to tap my hara with each time to remind the hara that it's playing the note, that it's going to play the note. Namo Samanda, Mo Ho Na. So I just want to do it that way. Namo Sa. Ma da na mu da ma da. So we're going to repeat those five sounds. Na mu san ma da. Na mu san ma da. And each with each one, just tap the hara. I'm just tapping with the blade of the hand. I'm keeping all this completely clear, open, 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 out of the way, no obstruction. The hara makes the sound. And I'm going to just tap to remind the hara how to speak okay that's the feeling right so let's do it together na mo ta ma ta 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 na mo ta ma Da na mo da ma da da mo da ma da. Okay. Um, are you able to keep your throat out of the way? Yes. No. So so. Okay. <laughs> Not so much. Okay. So when it feels it tight, again, come back to oh, just relax, relax. Do do what you need to do to just ah. Uh, 
invite it to be, whoa, a little more open, a little more free, a little more unobstructed. Um, <clears throat> Now let's, rather than hitting the hara, we won't tap the hara, but now let's just do namu samanda. We'll just say it as we would in a chanting, okay? But we're just gonna keep repeating those five sounds. So, you ready? Namo samanda, namo samanda, namo samanda. Namo Samanda, 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 Namo Samanda. Okay. Um, the uh, the the next thing that I'd like to play with is finding your comfortable hit, your comfortable pitch. You know, when we're all hearing in a room together, there's a natural tendency for all our voices to come together. In fact, Sonia's voice starts coming out of my mouth and then Kelly's voice comes out of Gina's mouth. And there's a real blend of what's going on. But in this environment, um, the, uh, you know, it's hard to get Zoom to hear all of our voices at the same time. So that's why we end up being on mute a lot. Although Zoom's getting better. So we might actually try what happens if we all come off mute. <laughs> you know, like we might just see what happens. <laughs> um, but what, I, what, um, what I'd like to do is, Namu uh, Samanda is a chant that, that is said three times. And I'd like to do the whole thing. So if you don't have an Okyo book with you, just keep saying Namu Samanda. But if you have the regular chant, then um, you can go through the regular chant uh, if, you, if you've got it. Uh, and, and I want to do it three times. And each time I'd like you to play with a different register. I'd like you to start, what I mean by register is what pit helps your throat relax the most? Sometimes, you know, we say, um, uh, especially, you know, we being a woman in this training, you know, I learned Okyo for men whose voice tends to pitch at a, a little lower level. And for a while, I think I stretched into a lower range. And then um, somebody who knew voice training really well said to me, I think you're straining your voice. Why don't you come up to a higher range? And so it's something I've played with over time. And what I can find is there's a certain range where this relaxes in a certain range where it tightens a little bit trying to, you know, because when you've got these little vocal cords, they put pressure in them in order to create different registers of sound. So there's certain ranges that are gonna be a little more relaxed for your body than others. And I'd like you to see if you can just find it. So I'd like you to try one that's a little too high, one you think is a little too low and one that's just right. See if you could play with that just a little bit. So I'm going to start Namu Samanda a little higher than I usually do, and then a little lower than I usually go. And then the third one, I'm going to see if I can find that, that Goldilocks place. It's just right, OK? Now I invite you to do the same thing. So if you've got the whole chant, we're going to do the whole chant now. If you don't know the whole chant, that is completely fine. Just do Namu Samanda. Um, you ready? Here we go. Namu samanda moto nano hara chi koto sha sono nan toji to en gya 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 ki gya ki on he fora shi fora hara shi fora hara shi fora chi shu sa chi shu sa shu chi ri shu chi ri so ha ja so ha ja si shi gya chi ri e so mo ko Namu samanda moto nano ha Poto sha so no nan hoji to en gya 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 ki gya ki onam she fora she fora hara she fora hara she fora che shu sa che shu sa shu che re shu che re so ha ja so ha ja se shi gya shi re es o mo ko namo samanda mo to nan o hara che koto sha so no nan hoji to en Gya 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 ki gya ki onam she fora she fora hara she fora hara she fora chi shu sa chi shu sa shu chi ri 
Chuchere sohaja sohaja se shigya shiri e somoku. So it was interesting because when I went too low, you could almost hear my voice catch, right? You know? So yeah, that, that's what I mean by that. There's a little, when something's kind of unnatural in the body, there's something's tightening to, to make it happen. Um, so playing with that in your own practice of play, try it a little higher, a little lower, find those places where it feels right, where this can relax. This, 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 it's, this instrument can relax. Um, so let me let me um, pause for just a moment here and ask: if, Are there any questions about anything we've done, or anything you'd like to go over again? Yeah, Kelly. Good morning, Ginny, and everyone. Um, I appreciate this so much. Um, I wondered. Uh, I really appreciated when you talked about uh, the pitch and finding your place, particularly as a woman. And um, I guess I'm I'm curious about in a group, like in regular Okia practice, um, when do the pitches naturally just kind of merge or is that part of the goal or do you just let it come out and allow that convergence to happen? Like, I'm wondering about the intention of matching-ish or letting it happen. Um, the, uh, it, it's a great question, Kelly. You know, and I think it, when, we, when we do train in a group, um, there's a kind of a progression in the training where you first work on the clarity of your own sound. You're getting that verticality in your own sound. And then that feeling of merging with the group or that feeling of blending with the group where you're really where you're really listening and merging all at the same time. You're not even sure where your voice starts and the person next to you stops, you know, or where your voice is and all this. Eventually it becomes unconscious, meaning it, it doesn't take intention after a while, that it just happens because truthfully, that's how sound works. I mean, that's how energy works generally. It tries to synchronize because there's less friction in that condition. So the sound will try on its own to light up person to person. We don't have to try to make it. We just relax into it, kind of, if we sense, get out of our own way, and that is the result. So ultimately, the okyo takes on that kind of naturalness. Uh, but for a while in my own training, I certainly had to really pay attention to how do I, how do I let the group's voice come through me rather than Ginny's voice? You know, I, I had to pay attention to that and listen for that and feel for that. And I found it it made my sense larger. Um, let's just try it for a moment here. I'm gonna invite all of us to come off mute. This could be complete cacophony, but I wanna just try Namu Samanda, just those five sounds, Namu Samanda. And let's see what happens if you listen for others' voices, <coughs> just relax into the cacophony of it. Let's just see what happens. All right, I'm gonna give us a bell just to get started here. <laughs> okay, right? Here we go. Okay, good. <laughs> you can see that we have different delays depending on where we are in the world. But could you could you feel yourself listening in a new way, trying to pick up where others were? Could you feel that going on in yourself? I mean, that's what I was trying to pull on. So you could see how you start to listen a little differently, like with bigger ears, uh, you know, and, and it's that in it's that bigness. It's like when we open ourselves up like that kind of satellite dish, that then we can more easily resonate with what's going on around us. And as you know, for the resonate course, does that come in handy? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. We get out of our own way. We quit interfering with the signal or having to, you know, um, assert ourselves in an awkward or clumsy way. Yeah. Okay. Um, the, uh, 
any other questions you'd like to ask or good what i'd like to what i uh, what i'd like to close with for those of you who have okyo books is um is the heart sutra uh makahanya haramita shingyo for those of you who do not have an okyo book what i'd like ask you to do is choose a vowel sound that just feels right for what you're hearing and and harmonize with me i what i what i mean by harmonize is just blend in with with the sound you're hearing from me a o u a e a o u a e and just use your long exhale and accompany the the sutra with your long vowel sound and you can mix up what vowel sound it is and just just let it come through you with that relaxed I want to say not not big flute way like a like a really big open flute way where this is all relaxed this is all relaxed this is all relaxed this is all relaxed the hara has it all right makahanya ramita shinyo tanje zai bo zas yo jin hanya hara meta je shoken go un kai ku to e sai ku yaku shade shi shiki fu e ku ku fu e shiki shiki zoku ze ku ku zoku ze shiki ju so gyo shiki yaku buon yo tse shade shi ze sho ho ku so fo sho fo mets Kufa jo fo zo fo gen ze ko ko cho mo shiki mo jo so gyo shiki mo gen ni bi ze shi ni mo shiki sho ko mi so ko ho mo gen kai nai shi mo e shiki kai mo mo myo yak mo mo myo jin nai shi mo ra shi yaka mo ra shi jin mo ko sho metsu do mo che yaka mo toko e mo sho to ko bo dai satta e hanya hara mi ta ko shin mo ke ge mo ke ge ko mo o ko fo on ri is sat ten do mo so ku gyo ne han san ze cho bu ze hanya hara mi ta ko to ku wa utara san mi ko san bo da ko che hanya hara mi ta ze dai jin shu ze dai myo shu ze mo jo shu ze mo to do shu no jo his sai ku shin shi ze fo ko ko ze zu hanya hara mi ta shu so ku ze zu shu wa zu ya te ya te hara ya te hara so ya te bo je so wa ka hanya shin yo Hey, with that, thank you very much. Thank you for joining me today. Here's the Okyo. <laughs>